Hello, everyone, and welcome to the classroom. Today, M is for mittens. Do you have a pair of mittens or maybe gloves? If you have some, you can grab them for our class time today. M is for mittens. Mittens are often made from yarn. I used yarn today to decorate my letter M. I just put some glue down and up and up and down on my M, and then I covered it with some yarn. Now that we can recognize letter M, let's practice writing it. I'll show you how. To write a letter M, you're going to make a line that comes straight down, go back to the top, slide down, back up, and straight down again. Let's practice making an uppercase M. First, we will make a line, and then we will slide up and down. To me, letter M looks like a line and then a letter V in the middle and then another line. Line, slide, up, and down. Let me show you how to make a lowercase m. You need a little line and over two times. Over, over. Let's make lowercase m. Lowercase m belongs downstairs if you're using handwriting paper. Little line and over two times. Little line and over two times. Make a little line and then over, over two times. Well, I know you're doing a great job listening and learning and practicing. I'm gonna give you a sticker for your handwriting paper. Now we know how to recognize letter M and we know how to write letter M. So next we'll talk about the sound that letter M makes. Letter M makes this sound. Put your lips together. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It sounds like me when I'm eating chocolate cake. I say, mmm, mmm, mmm. What makes you say, mmm? What's your favorite food? Mmm. Letter M says, mmm. Let's put that sound along with the vowels and do some blending and maybe even some reading. Can you help me sing the vowel song? A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. These are the vowels. Well, we'll use the vowel people's stick puppets to help us to remember the vowel sounds. And we know what letter M sounds like. Mmm, mmm, ah, A says ah, like achoo. Mmm, ah, ma, ma, ma. Let's put another letter at the end. Let's put a letter P. P says p, 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 like popcorn. Map, 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 map. Let's do the next one, M with E. E looks like old man E's ear. And what does E say? Eh, eh. Eh, what'd you say, Sonny? Mm, eh, meh, meh. Next, we have M with I. I looks like an icky sticky lollipop. Eh, mm, eh, meh, meh, like mitten. Next, we have letter O. O has a sore throat and goes to the doctor and says, ah, mm, ah, ma, 
Ma. Let's put another M at the end and read a very special word. This blend is ma. And there's another M. Mom. 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 M-O-M spells mom. Last we have letter U. And U has a tummy ache and says, oh, uh, mm, oh, uh, ma. Let's put a letter D at the end. D says, d, d, d. Sounds like we're knocking on the door. Ma, d, mud, mud, mud. Well, you did a great job. We read map, mom and mud. There's some more words we need to read, our sight words. Do you remember what this word is? Where? Where? Is, is. My, my. Where is my? Let's read our letter M book. Everything on this page starts with letter M. My M book. Where is my? And what is this? It starts with letter M. Mm, mitten. Where is my mitten? All right, let's read the next page. Where is my mm, mailbox. Where is my mailbox? Or you could say, where is my mail? Okay, let's read the last page. Where is my mm, moon? Where is my moon? <laughs> you did a great job reading our sight word book. Well, now it's time for math. For math today, we're going to be counting on. But first, we're going to be counting. I want to see how many dots are on this mitten. One, two, can you count with me? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's number ten. There are ten dots on this mitten. Now we're going to count on. We know there are ten dots on this mitten. We just counted them. I want to know what is ten plus one. So I'm just going to count on. This is ten. And after 10 comes 11. So 10 plus 1 equals 11. All right, let's do the next one. Now we want to know what 10 plus 5 is. We know this is 10. We're not going to count again. Just count on 10 and then 11, 12, 13. 14, 15. 10 plus 5 equals 15. Next, we're going to be adding 10 plus 7. We know this is 10, so let's count on. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17. 10 plus 7 equals 17. Now we will do 10 plus 4. Count on 11, 12, 13, 14. 10 plus 4 equals 14. Next, what is 10 plus 2? Let's count on 11, 
12. 10 plus 2 equals 12. Now, what is 10 plus 8? We know this is 10. We don't have to count all those dots again. Just keep counting. After 10 comes 11, then 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 10 plus 8 equals 18. Well, you did a great job today. We were counting on. You just take the bigger number. You don't have to count it again. Just continue counting on. Well, it is time for science and take a look right here on the shelf. I might need my mittens for science today. I have something in this can. What can you see? It's ice. And I'm also going to add some salt. When I add the ice to the can, it makes the can very cold. By adding salt to the ice, I'm making the temperature drop even further. That means the can is even colder. Now, there's something on the side of this can. You can probably see it. I'll scratch it. Hmm, that stuff is called frost. There's some on the bottom, too. So what is frost? Well, you know that water can have three forms. Water can be solid, like this ice. Water can be liquid, like the liquid water here. And water can also be a gas. Water in its gas form is in the air. It's called water vapor. Well, that water in the air touches the ice cold can and freezes. And that's what frost is. Sometimes you can go outside and you can see frost on the car, or the windows or the grass or other plants. What is frost? Well, frost is just water vapor that has frozen. It's touched something that was freezing cold and the water vapor in the air has frozen and made frost. We made frost on the can today for science. And now for art, we're going to make a mitten. So for art today, we're going to make a mitten and we're going to lace it. I'm going to need a piece of cardboard. You might use your cereal box. I'm using my oatmeal box. I'm going to trace my hand onto the cardboard. I'm going to make sure that my fingers stay together like a mitten. So go around your thumb and then around all your fingers together. That makes a mitten shape. Now I'm going to cut out my mitten. You might have to get a grown up to help you if it's hard to cut the cardboard. Now, if you don't have a hole punch, you can just decorate your mitten. You don't have to punch holes. You can just design your very own mitten. If you do have a hole punch and some yarn, then you can punch around the edge of the mitten like this. Again, get a grown up to help you if the cardboard is hard to punch. Now, I'm going to take a, a piece of yarn. And I'm going to go in and out, in and out, and lace around the mitten. So go in one hole and out the other, in and out. It's like sewing, in and out. In and out. Continue all the way around the mitten. In and out. In and out. 
When you get to the bottom, you can tie the two ends. And then you can cut, out, cut off the extra string. And there you have it. We made a mitten for our art today. Well, now it's time for story time. For story time today, we're going to read the book, The Mitten by Jan Brett. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens, and finally, grandmother made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nicky went. And it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. Can you spot the mitten? There it is. It's white like the snow. It's hard to see. Well, a mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. A rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten, and he wiggled in, feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they made some space. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumbs up. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and the fox, trotting by to investigate, saw the cozy mitten and felt drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth. They gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size but grandmother's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous ah, 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 achoo. The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On the way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw grandmother's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new white mittens. The end. But look at grandmother. She's wondering why one mitten looks so big. Why is one mitten bigger than the other? Because all those animals squeezed inside and they stretched it. Well, today M was for mitten. Tomorrow N is for nutrition. So I'll see you then. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone.